Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's Friday night. I'm thinking about what sort of content am I going to create on YouTube. And Jordan Peterson just published a video titled Why I am pro-Muslim but anti-thug. It's 20 minutes. It's already at 3 million views. Guys, let's watch this. Like the last week was crazy for him. So is this just uh, an apology because he received quite a big backlash? Or is this a genuine concern? So let's watch this, guys. I'm very excited, super excited. This is gonna be a roast, or maybe I'm gonna be touched by his by his views. So let's see, guys. I cannot wait. Really, this is like make, this makes me so excited. Anyways, let's go. From time to time, I write something when there's something particularly complex happening, and I have to get my thoughts in close formal order. And so I did that this week. I wrote an article for The Telegraph. I'm going to read it here. It's called, I'm pro-Muslim, but anti-thug. Over the past few years, I've engaged in a continual dialogue with people across the spectrum of Islam, from Ayan Hirsi Ali, who left her religious upbringing behind, through moderates such as Mustafa Akul and Hamza Youssef, and with forays into the more conservative side, with Muhammad Hijab, for example, a rather temperamental young Muslim, not without his influence in the UK. Just a side note, like Muhammad Hijab is not like conservative. Yeah, he is, but that is the majority of Muslims. Like the liberal people you spoke with, those are not the majority Muslims. Those are like super minority. Uh, anyways, let's continue. I have done this because I believe that Jews, Christians, and Muslims share more in common than in division. And because I know that since there is no such thing as a world without religion, we all must do what is best with what we have been bequeathed. I find myself in some arguably serious online trouble this week, nonetheless, although I realize I'm far from alone in this because I indicated my desire that the authorities in Israel give the terrorists who invaded their land and tortured and killed their citizens the hell that they most truly deserve. How could I say such a thing while simultaneously maintaining my desire for a rapprochement between the peoples of the Abrahamic tradition? Let us begin that discussion by rendering unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. The attack on Israel last week by the monsters of Hamas occurred, as far as I am concerned, not because Muslims and Jews must by religious necessity be at each other's throats, but because Iran, a country run by thugs and deemed so even by its own people, has become very concerned that the rulers of Saudi Arabia will continue in their laudable attempts to formulate a productive peace with Israel Four Arab countries recently signed the Abraham Accords. Gotta pause there. Let me backtrack what he just said. So his conclusion why Hamas attacked Israel is not because Gaza has been in a 15, 16 year old blockade or Palestine has been occupied for 75 years their homes have been destroyed, they were displaced, uh, 700,000 Palestinians in something called Nakba. Um, they are oppressed, killed in thousands, bombarded. Uh, that's not the reason why Hamas attacked Israel. So that's, don't look at that. Don't, uh, don't look at the context. <laughs> no, it's because Iran is having some proxy war with Saudi Arabia. Okay, yeah. Okay, Iran, Iran, yeah, maybe they have some, some of their own uh, selfish interest in this war against Israel, I'm sure. And they are funding Houthis in Yemen and, and Hamas possibly. But that's not the reason why Hamas attacked. Why is there a conflict in this area of the world for the past 75 years? 
And with your first presumption that Muslims and Jews are kind of at each other's throats, where did you get that from? Did you realize that just past 75 years it has been like this? But before, it was not like that, to be honest. Um, for example, have Muslims, pre Muslims prevented Jews from praying in their synagogues? Or prevented Christians from praying in their churches? Or observing their religious uh, ceremonies and laws? Like complete, even for Christians? Under the Caliphate, have they? No, they haven't. They had separate court systems, separate law, separate Sharia. Yeah, the overruling, let's say, foreign policy or military service was uh, done by the Muslims, but they could organize their communities how they wanted. Here, people of the book, Ahl Kitab. Do you know the history of Jerusalem? Like when Umar bin Khattab, radiallahu an, when he conquered Jerusalem, he hasn't slaughtered any person. And he brought back Jewish families who the Christians wiped out. It looks like you're missing a lot of context and also your history is completely off. And also you don't understand that Islam is actually like the best for Jews and Christians. Like it's the only religion out of these three that protects the other two. When Christians rule, they typically cannot be coinciding with Muslims that much. And with the Jews, I mean, they're fine, but yeah, did the Holocaust happen in Muslim lands? No, it didn't. Um, when Jews run society, you see what happens in Israel. They displace people because they feel they are the chosen one. They are the, the chosen one by God. They hate Christians. So from, from the first two minutes, I have a feeling it's not a genuine apology, but let me continue. Maybe JP has had a change of heart. But I can see even his tone is so arrogant. Uh, it's not gonna go well in our community, I can tell you that. I'm a very cool Muslim, like, I will tell you, you're a scum, as I made a video about Jordan Peterson, but I can imagine other guys going hard at you. Anyways, let's, let's watch this. Signed the Abraham Accords, a Trump era initiative that should have garnered that ex-president for all his manifold faults, a Nobel Peace Prize, at least in a world where the likes of Barack Obama were deemed worthy of such an honor. Behind the Arab signatories, who were essentially the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Morocco, and Sudan, stood the Saudis, without whose tacit agreement no such steps would have been taken, and everyone knew it. Joe Biden and the Democrats had a historic and unparalleled opportunity to bring the Saudis into the fold soon after they took power from Trump. Instead, demonstrating an almost miraculous short-sightedness, they alienated that sometimes troublesome Middle Eastern power almost immediately after adopting office, choosing instead of peace, the opportunity to deny to the previous president of the United States any of the honor he most truly deserved for his revolutionary breakthrough, one that had been deemed utterly impossible by the blinkered fools who ruled the State Department for decades. Okay, just a few words about these Abraham Accords. The Abraham Accords are viewed in the Muslim world as a complete betrayal to the Ummah. Uh, it's only accepted by the rulers or the governments, but if you ask people in the streets of Morocco or the UAE, they definitely don't like Israel and they don't want to normalize relationships with them. So I understand the overall geopolitical strategy, but it doesn't make sense basically from Islamic paradigm because in Islam we believe you cannot normalize these Abraham Accords and create this sort of like one religion out of these three and just have everybody do their own thing and just live in the liberal societies and you can do your Ramadan, you guys do your Christmas, you do your Hanukkah and but just keep it to yourselves, we'll have these Abraham Accords and we're all kind of going this one direction. This is not going to work with Muslims. To say it again, the Saudis would have come aboard the great ship of the Abraham Accords two years ago had Biden seized the opportunity. Instead, he and his fellow Democrats downplayed the significance of the Trump administration's cardinal achievement just to score the cheapest 
and most expensive of political points. And here we are again, in consequence, drowning in the blood of many Israeli and Palestinian alike. He's, li- he's reading this entire conflict completely wrong. Like, is he this stupid or is it on purpose? I think he actually might be senile or quite old, that he cannot comprehend what's going on, how he's being manipulated. This could be possible because he's just reading it as this binary Republican, Democrat, this this is gone. This, we don't care about this stuff. Uh, like, look at it. Zoom out. My God, don't be such an inbox human being. Anyways. Despite being snubbed in a truly provocative manner and their consequent and justified anger, remember the Saudi unwillingness to provide the U.S. with additional oil when Biden asked? Remember their recent flirtation with China? The Saudi leaders have been strongly considering the continuation and extension of the Abrahamic peace process. In consequence, the totalitarian mullahs of Iran have been driven to desperation, knowing full well that such an agreement would undermine and isolate them fatally. This is the same Iran, by the way, that the Democrats under Biden have utterly failed to resist and control, continuing a pattern well established by the aforementioned Nobel laureate Obama. And what of Iran? Is- okay, so I agree that, for example, one big reason why Hamas started the attack, because they knew they couldn't win, like they couldn't <laughs> occupy Israel, but they did it. Yes, maybe they were funding by funded by Iran. I don't know. Maybe they were. Let's say they were. And they did it because of these Abraham Accords. And why? Because Saudis were very close to signing a deal with Israel. So basically, yeah, Iran helped them out. Possibly, I don't know, man. But the, the thing is, they did it right now because what would happen if Saudis normalize relationship with Israel? Saudi is a huge country in the Middle East. It's like the headquarters of Muslim world, right? You have Mecca, Medina there. So other countries could potentially follow it because it's one, one of the major powers. And it's so dangerous. If they would do it, then that would have a ripple effect. And also the Palestinian cause, the Palestinian struggle, the Gaza Strip, would be not used as like an external struggle where we all kind of come together and try to help them. It would just be a domestic issue of Israel because it would have been normalized. It has been, um, you know, it has been recognized as a state. So it's their issue. It's happening in their own borders. Don't get involved. Now, since they don't recognize Israel, it's not like uh, they care about Palestine, even though it's not amazing, but they still care. You know, there's still this cause. But if imagine they would all normalize these relationships through war or through peace treaties then the Palestinian issue becomes their own issue. So what's the Zionist agenda? Is to clean the land from all the, from the polytheism and even the Muslims. So they would have a green light on further persecution, further displacement. It wouldn't be maybe in a, this genocidal way that we see now, but it would happen over time and there would be nothing left of Palestine. So basically, they did this because they knew this is the last chance to stop this deal from happening. I, I'm sure that played a role as well because rag- rationally speaking, this doesn't make sense because they wouldn't be able to conquer uh, the whole Israel. But you have to look at the geopolitical situation. So I agree with the Abraham Accord did play a role, but it's tied to the Palestinian cause. Why? Because if they would sign the Abraham Accord, which you love, it would basically put the Palestinian cause on a complete side burner, like nobody cares about them anymore. And those millions of people would be left without anyone. Is it a shining star in the Islamic firmament? Or is it a country hag-ridden by a pathologically self-serving criminal kleptocracy, religious in name only? Let's turn to psychology for a moment to answer that question. There is a form of psychopathology well detailed in recent years, the veritable place where psychological instability meets evil itself. The personality features that are part and parcel of that danger to integrated psyche and state alike first acquired the nomenclature of dark triad. 
a combination of Machiavellianism, instrumental manipulativeness and deceit, narcissism, inflated false self-esteem and desire for unearned attention and status, and psychopathy, a malignant mixture of criminal propensity, callousness, and parasitism. The dark triad traits were identified and measured by intellectual descendants of the Canadian Dr. Robert Hare, who spent his life assessing and endeavoring to understand the worst of the habitual criminals responsible not only for the most barbaric and cruel of misdemeanors, but also for the vast majority of criminal acts. The famous Pareto principle of unequal distribution of talent and acquisition applies to the underworld as well. Just as 1% of the world's inhabitants hold something approximating 70% of the wealth, so 1% of the criminals commit 70% of the crimes. But all that's not bad enough, bad as it is. More recent investigators of the structure of the darkest of temperamental propensities found it necessary to add an extra dimension to the measurement matrix. Sadism. Positive delight in the suffering of others. The more unnecessary and gratuitous, the better. So now we have the dark tetrad. Dark tetrad types fit well into what is known as cluster B of the personality disorders, which also includes such delights as antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, the female equivalent of the criminal tendency, histrionic personality disorder, also mostly female. Guys, what the hell is he talking about? Can you just cut to the chase, man? Because this is like you're ranting all over the place. Like I'm, I'm waiting to hear what sort of parallel are you going to draw, something that will blow my mind, but let's see. And narcissistic personality disorder. Those who manifest cluster B symptomatology or sins have, in addition to their other psychologically and socially dangerous tendencies, the proclivity to claim positive virtue or outright victim status while pursuing their utterly self-serving, grandiose, and destructive claims. The cluster B types lie, cheat, steal, gossip, reputation savage, brag, claim credit where none is due, and distribute blame to everyone but themselves, all the while pursuing nothing but their own immediate, immature, hedonistic self-gratification all the while trumpeting their moral virtue and or brandishing their identity as unfairly oppressed innocents. When they organize, and this happens from time to time, they threaten the integrity of the entire society within which they operate, hoping to light everything aflame and dance orgiastically in the rooms. This happened after the French Revolution. It happened in Soviet Russia. It happened in Nazi Germany. It's happening now in the West with the rise of the woke. It's something markedly facilitated by the power, accessibility, and irresponsibility of social media, which allows for cluster B misbehavior to propagate with none of the usual real world consequences. And we haven't plunged far enough into the abyss yet. Think for a moment. Use your imagination for evil, if you dare. If you are hell-bent on doing nothing but maximizing your own resentful, narrowly self-serving, juvenile pleasure, hoping as well to do maximal harm along the way to anyone skilled and conscientious enough to have deserved a just reward, in what guise would you cloak yourself? If you were the least bit treacherously wise, you would adopt a religious cover. How better to camouflage yourself than in the robes of all that is traditional, just, merciful, and ethical? That is less effective in the West post-death of God in consequence of the collapse of religious authority. So here, the dark tetrad types portray themselves as the very avatars of compassion. We're for the downtrodden because we can then in good conscience punish the deservedly successful. 
We're for diversity because an ethical unity stands against our depredations. We're for inclusivity because our fetishes and kinks demand their full expression. And Jordan Peterson is very creepy here. I gotta eat something like he's boring me to death. But let's see. To hell with everyone else. We're for equity because merit is our sworn enemy. Ask yourself this too. How else are you to explain the staggeringly incomprehensible spectacle of, for example, queers for Palestine? Perhaps the most egregious example of the union of the desire by progressives to tear down everything in the West that is worthy, even at the cost of formulating an alliance that would in an instant be suicidal if it ever made itself manifest. And for those Muslims thinking that it's the evil Jews trademark registered, is Iran your idea of a worthy Islamic state? The very Iran, whose citizens, Muslims all, have been on the brink of revolution against their psychopathic masters for more than a year and dreaming about it for much longer than that. The very Iran, whose hypothetically religious leaders have to oppress their own women because that's the only way they can control those uppity sufficiently to have a go at them? The Iran who has in recent weeks decided to rattle the chains of their Hamas dogs, stating in the background, explicitly or implicitly, unleash the cruelest of your minions, send them to Israel to do their worst. Wow, that's insane. Like, do you know the history of Iran? Do you know, like, they have the Shia Muslims there? So they are run by these Khomeini type of thing. The, like, we don't believe Iran is running Ummah, like the, the Muslim world. And we will never believe that because they are on the sidelines. They Like, they are super minority of the actual Sunni Muslim Islam. Because they have this other version of it. And it even ties into their belief. And uh, they believe in these infallible Imams sometimes concept. Well, I mean, it's very complex. But, like, you just... Suppose your psychological research on these like sadistic people on Iran. It's like so dumb Just look at their history man, and that's that's all you gotta know The Jews will respond as they must Turn the opinion of the Arab world against the Hebrews before we lose our grip And if that means that the Palestinians unite everyone reasonable in the world against them at their great cost So be it and has that not happened? Muslims, ask yourself this. Who in the West has allied themselves with the hypothetical cause of the oppressed Palestinians in the days since the Hamas invasion? Good question. <clears throat> no one. Because the reality is Muslims are alone in this fight. As I explained in the first video, and, I, and this video confirms it, you're a scum. This means like you don't even understand the context. You don't want to recognize the oppression. You haven't said a single word about the apartheid. You, have, you haven't said a single word about the innocent being killed for decades. The bombardment from just last year, two years ago. Not a word of displaced Palestinians. Nothing. So... What do you want? Like, of course, the Western governments are aligned with Israel, but the people are not. So you can see the protests and you can see generally consensus is split between 50-50. Now go to the global south or the east and ask them, who do they support? The oppressed or the giant superpower who has the best military in the world and the West behind them? Like, do you, so you, basically you presuppose that whatever the West think is better by this question, because you said who from the Western leaders or Western world do you have as an ally? And the answer is not much, not many. Well, or maybe not nobody. But that presupposes that the West is always correct. And it's not correct in this conflict because by definition it is not. It's lying. Not the West, but the Israel. So so you're siding with the with the lie, basically. Has West ever lied before? Yes. Look at the war in Iraq. What was the excuse to go there? Massive weapons of mass destruction. Were they, were they any? No. 
chemical, chemical attacks, no? So, just check the pattern of invasions, bro. And uh, see it again. But this time it's not gonna go. This time the whole world will be against this. It's not, it's not gonna be as easy as before. And uh, so yeah, you are actually su supremacists because you think you're, the West is better. Which in some things they are. Like some things I'm from the West. Well, Slovakia is not the West, but we are in the EU and NATO and I like some of the things in the West, but morally it has nothing, nothing to offer. University students demented by the same idiot left radical professors who have destroyed academia. The former president of Harvard University itself, Lawrence Summers, said as much last week. Who else? Marxists, whose hatred for Islam exceeds anything that the most committed, periocal, fundamentalist Christian or Jew might muster. Remind me. Like, you, you think we need an ally? You're so dumb because you think we need like these Marxists or these leftists or queers. We don't care about those guys. I mean, if they want to support Palestine, great. We have no need for that. All we need is Allah. And this is a cause that will never die. Muslims will forever struggle for Palestine. You don't understand the Muslim mindset. We will not give up, even if we were alone. Because we have Allah on our side. He promised us in the Quran, we will be victorious. So, you see it, bro? Like nothing, nothing you say is ever gonna change Muslim mind. Do you understand? If you give us money, power, military, alliances, okay, thanks. But this is our position because it's in the Quran and the Sunnah, and that's it. I think he doesn't get it. Remind me once more. What is it that's the opiate of the masses, Muslims? What is regarded as the essential and absolute enemy of the communist utopia? Nothing but the very religious practice you share with your Abrahamic brothers. Who else bringing up the rear? The increasingly delusional alphabet brigade, the LGBT2s, SL, QQ, etc. community. Foolish and blind enough to assume that commonality of hypothetical oppression is enough to unite it somehow with the mullahs of Tehran and the gangsters of Hamas, dark tetrad types all, who would have their blue and pink heads on a pike in the street in a moment if they were only granted the opportunity. Useful idiots. This is useful idiocy on a scale undreamed of. Where did you get that from, bro? Do you think... Muslims kill gay people on the streets and we take their heads on the on the thing like again Where are these concepts coming from? You know for a death, pen death penalty to be applied in a Sharia country, let's say You need four witnesses to the crime. So if they have a blue hair and they walk on the street It doesn't that's not a crime However, if there would be let's say sexual things happening then yeah if four people could see that and it would be actually penetration then yeah that's punishable but who would do that like that? so if they would just hang around nobody would care about them like there are millions of gay people in muslim countries they just hang around we know they are gay but they don't commit anything on the public so they will not get even hamas or all these groups they don't care by the most extreme of Leninists and Maoists alike. And what of Israel as an oppressor state? Well, the Palestinians who live in Israel proper are certainly a lot better off by any standard than the Palestinians who live in Gaza, despite the... Wow, what a, what a weasel this guy is. Ben Shapiro talking points. Subhanallah. Yes, they are well better off because they live in Israel, retard. Gaza doesn't have electricity, there's no water, there's no all that, so of course they have a better life. Logic. Despite the fortune that has been sent to that blighted area, all of which, for all intents and purposes, has been funneled into the secret and not so secret bank accounts of the dark tetrad religious leaders who parade their lying virtues so successfully. It was CBC News itself that announced in 2003 that Yasser Arafat, 
had squirreled away $1 billion in his hidden portfolios. Anyone who doesn't think the same thing is happening now, and that goes for Ukraine too, folks, is a fool whose blindness is leading them into the proverbial pit. Tell me this, honestly, angry Muslims, desirous of genuinely practicing your faith. Do you really think you have anything in common with those who have aligned themselves with you in the West in the past week? Are those the brave and forthright comrades in arm whose support leads credence to the eternal and endlessly manipulable Muslim against Jew story? And tell me again how that alliance is better for your faith and your people than recognition of your Abrahamic commonality with the Christians and present-day descendants of the ancient Hebrews. And tell me too how they... We don't care about those groups, I told you. We are alone. We are not with Christians, we are not with Jews, we are not with lesbians. We are alone. We don't need any help. Just leave us alone. Tell me too how the decentralized structure of your religion, admirable in so many regards, protects it against capture under situations of duress by the bloody psychopaths who make a faith nothing but a front for criminal evil. I'm not saying we're any better in the West. Our susceptibility to the blandishments of the postmodern Marxist dark tetrad mob is a weakness of equivalent danger. But it's your people taking central stage right now and your people who have to make a wise decision. Or else, and it's a big or else. The Saudis and the other signees of the Abraham Accords have a stark choice in front of them, as do the distributed and various people of the Islamic world. They and you can allow the thugs, particularly those in Iran and Palestine, to triumph in their propagandistic efforts to prop up their own dismal, miserable, and tyrannical states. They and you can, in consequence, scuttle the new peace treaty signed with Israel, forego all the obvious benefits for the Muslim world offered by that agreement, and to acquiesce to continued rule by the cruelest of hypocrites, misusing faith in the worst possible of ways. Wow, so this entire video is a pitch for signing the Abraham Accords. As I thought Jordan Peterson can't sink any lower, he just did. He just did. He's pitching you the idea, hey, come come be with Israel, it's gonna be much easier for you. Why live under these, why, why, why you need to, you know, rely on Iran and all these guys, just come live with Israel, we'll take care of you, we'll, you'll be fine. Destruction of Islam. What is the famed second commandment of Moses? Do not use God's name in vain. What does that mean? It does not mean do not swear, or if it does, that is its most trivial warning. It means much more fundamentally, do not attribute to yourself the virtue of the divine when acting on your own behalf, let alone when acting in the thrall of the forces of darkness themselves. This sentiment is reinforced at least three times by Christ himself in the Gospels. First, when he says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be, as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Second, pointing to the moral hazard in doing good works other than privately, But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, and third, when he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Once again, the mere claim that it is religious conviction that motivates personal action is no proof whatsoever that such is the case. It is very difficult to aim upward in alliance with the spirit that wishes everything well and in keeping with the truth. It is a path rife with moral hazard and the public display of virtue, including the adoption of high church or mosque or synagogue position, is not any guarantee that the God claimed to be present is in fact there. Quite the contrary all too often. The Saudis and you in the Muslim world more generally could instead remove the beam from your eyes, as we should equally in the West, see what is so starkly manifesting itself in the world, turn away 
from the terrible, tempting path of righteous destruction. Continue the work already begun in uniting the people of the book and thereby bring a productive, generous, wise, and lasting peace to this benighted, but still not yet doomed and even potentially wonderful green and blue orb. The people of the book can only unite under Islam. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because only Islam can protect them. No other system can protect the people of the book. Okay. We need a transcendental axis to revolve around, to move us beyond a blinkered materialism, to protect us against a foolish populism, and to lift up our eyes to the eternal heaven beckoning above us. In the West, we have that for all the faults of the followers of the creeds, and even with the creeds themselves as currently understood in the form of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. We need our Abrahamic faith, lest the hedonistic pagans, and worse, prevail. And we need to stand united behind it. And that is why I am pro-Muslim, but anti-thug. And if you are a true follower of Allah, that is the decision that is incumbent upon you in equal measure. And that goes as well for the Christians and the Jews. Wow. Okay. Whew. I don't know what to say, guys. It's been 40 minutes. I was maybe rambling a lot, but closing thoughts. Uh, he was quite... Uh, he was speaking down on Muslims towards the end. Similarly to his video, Message to Muslims. So I've, it's, it's a similar tone. He hasn't learned anything. And he is the same. He... Just think about this, he hasn't mentioned one oppression of Palestinians. He hasn't said one Palestinian life. He's sorry for thousands that died last week, this week. This guy, guys, this guy, he is a shaitan. It's a human shayateen that will drive you to Jahannam if you listen to him. So whoever listens to me and you value my opinion, I'm telling you, do ne never listen to Jordan Peterson again. And I told you this before, but I thought maybe, maybe, maybe he can, he can like say something smart, but intellectually he's, he's, he's not capable of seeing the patterns. He doesn't understand the spiritual battle. He doesn't understand the Muslim struggle. He doesn't understand the Al-Quds, the Al-Aqsa Mosque. He doesn't, he doesn't know anything. And he, even if you remove all that, and if you just look at it like unbiasedly as a murder of civilians, you would have some sympathy or consciousness, but only a human like parasite would say something like that and actually pitch the Israel still at the end. So he's still a Zionist at the end of the day. The worst thing is he's not even a Christian, guys. He's not even a Christian because he doesn't believe in God. He didn't, he never said he believes in God. So he's not a Christian. He likes Christianity. He's not a Christian. And he's a Zionist. SubhanAllah. I mean, I understand if you're a Jewish Zionist. I understand Christian Zionist. I understand even a Muslim Zionist. The backstabbers in the Ummah. But a non, non-religious non Zionist is like, what? What is that? He's not even ethnically Jew. Not a single Muslim influencer will receive this message positively. I have no idea what you've been told. Or I have no idea why you recorded this. But there is no coming back from this. I hope you understand this. Like, There is no coming back from what you just said. There is no coming back from that tweet. You are done, my friend. And uh, you have been basically destroyed by yourself. I have never seen self-destruction like this before. It's insane. You don't listen to feedback. You're like repeating the same stuff. Anyways. That's my feedback. So, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.